There we go. I had to go get the lights. Good morning, church. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Hello. I didn't hear a whole lot out there. Good. Well, Matt's doing good. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick. So, uh, special prayer request uh, for our, our church family. Uh, you guys know John and Angela Spears. Uh, M- M- Angela's mom has... Uh, Unfortunately, now uh, lost her battle and passed away, uh, I think, early this morning. So uh, keep them in your prayers this morning and uh, and that entire family. For you all that don't know, uh, uh, that's Isaiah's in-laws. Uh, John is Brandy's brother. So um, just remember that our hearts are heavy, heavy for them this morning. So... Um, but this morning now we have something we always love starting the service off with a baptism and so this morning we have another one so miss reagan so last sunday adam came up to me and said hey uh travis reagan reagan would like to talk to you real quick and uh so I went over and I got to talking with Reagan for just a minute and I realized, hey, this is going to be something that's going to take a little bit longer. So I asked her to come back to the live table and meet with me afterwards. And so after church last Sunday, Reagan came and she told me that she'd been saved for a long time and she'd just never followed through with baptism. And she gave me her testimony and it's a, a great testimony. Anytime that God has saved someone is a great testimony. And she said, but I want to I want to follow through with baptism. And so this morning she has come to do that. So, Miss Reagan, did you ask Jesus to save you? Yes. And did he do so? Yes. Man, that just... Mm. Then on your profession of faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ... In obedience to his, his command, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Matt, let's worship. Redeemed by His grace, let the house 
of the Lord sing praise for church because we were the beggars now we're royalty we were the prisoners now we're running free we are forgiven accepted redeemed by his grace let the house of the Today, if we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. If we won't be quiet. Shout out to praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out to praise. Oh, oh. We shout out to praise. Good morning, Life Church great to be in the Lord's house this morning. We have a whole lot to be thankful for this morning. Amen. We serve a good God, don't we? We serve a God that answers our prayers. For those that don't know, we have an answered prayer this morning. Abel got to come home this week. Let's praise God for that. He's still got a long road to recovery, but it's evident we serve an almighty God. That is in the healing business. Amen. So let me share a passage of scripture with you this morning out of Ezra chapter 3, verse 11. It says, And they sang, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his favor is upon Israel forever. We're going to sing about that this morning. We're going to sing about just how good our God is. Because Without Him, we have nothing. Without Him, we are nothing. And if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I ask you to just not go out that way today. This altar is always open. It never closes. I need to turn my phone on silent. But we serve a great God, amen. As we've seen this week through many things, through many prayers, through, through many things in our lives, we've just seen everything that He does. We don't deserve none of it. We don't deserve any of it. But He loves us so much that if we accept His Son, Jesus, we have eternal life through Him, an eternal home in heaven. Let's bow and have a word of prayer this morning. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, as we humbly bow in Your presence, Lord, we just want to thank You for all the wonderful blessings You've given us, Father. Lord, we just thank You for answered prayers. Lord, we just thank You for everything that You do. Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on that cross for our sins, Lord. Lord, we just ask you now to just let your spirit flood this place, Father. Lord, just let us lift your name on high and to just praise you. Praise your holy, holy name, Father. Lord, we know we've got some that's hurting. Father, we just pray that you just wrap your loving arms around them and just let them feel your presence, Lord. Lord, just give peace that can only come from, from just you, Father. Lord, we pray that you be with the service this morning. Be with the ones that make it up, Father. And Lord, as always, if there's one here this morning that doesn't know your son Jesus as their personal Savior, Lord, we pray that today be the day of salvation. Be with Travis give him the words you'd have him to say and just hide him behind the cross, Father. Lord, everything that we do here today and, and throughout, just pray that it be all for your praise, honor, and glory. It's the last name I pray. Amen. Oh um. 
have been held in your hands and from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Well, I love your voice, for you have led me through the fire and the darkest night. Well, you are close like no other. And for I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Wholeheartedly 
my soul undeserving. God, you're so God, church.
you're weeping and rejoicing, He is for you, He is for you.
Second Peter, chapter number three. Second Peter, chapter number three, where we're going to be our springboard text this morning. So, I don't know how many of you guys know this about me, but I love Halloween. So, this this is one of my favorite times of the year. Not even going to lie. Not even going to try to pretend. Uh, I, I I like Halloween, and for especially, I think a lot of the folks in the youth group they know this is like and and probably Courtney more than anybody because I do this at home a lot and it's gotten me whacked a couple of times but I love to scare people like I mean like that's one of my favorite things to do I know don't judge me don't judge me but I love to scare people Uh, last night we had a couple of uh, clowns show up and um Poor, poor Jay, she is not a fan of those, and so I had to make it a special point to introduce every one of them to Jay. I mean, that's just kind of what I do. So, but, but last year, last year at our trunk of treats, uh, my lovely wife, she always picks out my costumes for me. So some of y'all was here a couple of years ago, whenever I was the explorer riding on a dinosaur dragon thing whatever it was little inflatable thing there's videos floating around about that by the way then last year she thought it would be wise to get me this seven foot tall inflatable alien costume i thought was okay it was it was like it was nothing terrifying i thought this is not going to be too bad on the kiddos so like, it should be kind of inviting, you know, big, cuddly, inflatable alien. Boy, was I wrong. That probably scared more people than the clowns did, just to be honest with you. But there was one in particular. <laughs> you know, Jake and April's little girl, Laura, just, uh, uh, I, I mean, she was terrified. Like, she she decided as soon as she seen me that I was the most dangerous thing in the world and she was not coming near me. Uh, she would try to climb up his leg. She hid behind Mama and she her head was on a swivel constantly. Like, where's he at? Where, is he coming this way? Like, it was yesterday the first time that child gave me a hug in a year. Even out of the costume, because my face was peering through that window on that costume, I was associated with the giant alien, and I was dangerous. She was not coming near me. Like, it took almost a year to get a high five or a fist bump. She actually spoke to me and gave me a hug last night. It was, I mean, that was, I mean, this has been a year in the making. And so, like I said, she was like, her, her head was always... On a swivel, like she was completely aware of her surroundings and she was going to beware of that alien because he was dangerous. No clever title this morning, no, just it's very simply, the title of the message this morning is Beware and Be Aware. Stand with me as we honor the reading of God's Word this morning, Second Peter chapter number 3. We're going to look at verse number 17. You, therefore, beloved, since you know these things beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own firm footing, being led away by the deception of the wicked. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We praise you, Lord. Uh, we, there's so much to be to be thankful for and to be praising you for, Lord. Uh, you've moved in our church. You've moved in our uh, in our pastor's family, Lord. You've just you've been all over this thing, and we we cannot thank you enough for just showing up and just man, just being who you are, God. We just want to praise you for that. We just want to thank you for showing up already this morning. Lord, we want to thank you for the one who's baptized. We want to thank you uh, for your spirit showing up convicting hearts already, Lord. And we just pray that if there is one here this morning that doesn't know you, that that conviction is so strong on them this morning, Lord, that they will come to know you as their Savior before they leave this place today. 
Help us to do business with you this morning, Lord. It doesn't have to be an invitation time. We know that we can do business with you at any time. So I pray, God, that if there's something on someone's heart this morning, that they don't wait, that they'll just go ahead and hand that over to you. Lord, I want to pray for um, the the spirits, Lord, uh, for, for Angela's family, for uh, their loss, Lord. And we want to lift them up as a church and just pray for your comfort to be around them this morning. Lord, I, I pray now that you'll just uh, use me this morning to preach your word and not mine, to preach exactly what you would have me to, to say the words that you would have me to, and uh, just take Travis completely out of the way. Lord, we praise you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. So, beware. That word beware, it means be cautious and alert to the dangers of, and we can just fill in the blank. Okay? Be cautious and alert. You know, when we're growing up, like I was told when I started driving, beware of other drivers. I was, you know, right now we have to beware of these phone scammers. Like, I mean, you got scammers calling every day or we're told to beware of this, that, and the other, all sorts of things to be aware of and again like I alluded to earlier I have to be aware of scaring Courtney because the dangers thereof is me getting just whacked so uh, but but to be aware is to be alert to those dangers and so I think we we need to, to look at this in our lives a little closer so I think we need to be alert to the choices that we make. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Mm, man, somebody beat me to that. but Man, that's, that, that to me, like we, I think we overlook that so many times that there are literal consequences to our actions there's literal consequences to the choices that we we make in life and so a lot of times we are turning inward to our own self to find out what we think we need to be doing and it's about I it's about me it's about what is best for me in my eyes and we forget about this passage of scripture right here that says there's a way that seems right to man, this is the way that seems right to me, but my choices if in my sin nature will lead me down a path of destruction more than they will lead me on a path of righteousness. Therefore, I need to turn my decision-making over to God. I think we look past that sometimes, some of the choices that we make. Then I, got, I, think, about, I think about our attitudes. There, you know that there's a, a consequence to, to bad attitudes, right? Yeah, I must be the only one that has a bad attitude sometimes. Moving on. Bad attitudes are usually a product or precipitated by pride. Proverbs sixteen eighteen says, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before the fall. There's consequences that we have to be aware of. There's dangers to those bad attitudes. This is the one I'm going to spend a second on, though. Because this, is, this one is one that, that I think really hits home to me because it took me a while to get there. Unforgiveness. I bet that if I got to polling and talking and, and having people raise their hand on a few things right now that we'd be having hands be shooting up over the building here in just a second. But I'm, gonna, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to, to raise your hand on it, but I want you to start thinking about this. How many grudge holders do we have in the building today? That, that's, just in, that's just a generalization right now. 
Just be, I, I'm somebody that can hold a grudge pretty easy. But let's start breaking it down to where the rubber meets the road. Let's talk about that unforgiveness more than just a grudge. Let's talk about unforgiveness. How many of y'all in here can say, there is some unforgiveness in my life right now that I know is affecting relationships in my life? Let's, let's just think about that for a second. I have unforgiveness in my life that I know is affecting other relationships in my life. Because the reality is, is if you can tell how that unforgiveness is affecting relationships, other relationships in your life, guess what other relationships it's affecting? It's affecting your relationship with God, with your Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you have that unforgiveness going on in your life, then it's literally affecting your relationship with Jesus, and it's also going to be reflected in your relationships with others. Here's the Bible on it. Matthew 5, 23. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there, before the altar, and on your way, be first reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Man, to me, this is strong language. I don't know about you guys, but this is strong language. It's affecting my service. It's affecting my service. It's affecting the why behind my service. Because if I'm going to be completely honest, it's really hard for me to get up here and do this thing that God's called me to do when I have unforgiveness in my heart. Because I can get up here and start talking about unforgiveness, and then the more that I talk about it, God's like, hey dude, I wrote this for you. Hey, hey, hey Travis, I know you're talking about this unforgiveness, but, but who haven't you forgiven? I don't know if you guys, how many of y'all uh, know this, and, and so I use this as a part of my testimony, and this is this the strongest thing that I, could, I can use uh, from my perspective to talk about how important unforgiveness is. Um, my brother was murdered here in Pulaski County 20, 25 years ago, 26 years ago now, something like that. It was, uh, I can tell you the exact date, but I don't remember how many years it is. And I had surrendered to ministry. I was preaching. I was, I was teaching teens. And man, I, and it seemed like I always had something to talk about on unforgiveness and about forgiving others, forgiving your enemies, forgiving your friends, uh, even on those small things. And... God got a hold of me one day while I was teaching and I, I stopped and told that group of kids that day, I was like, all right guys, this is my testimony. God, I'm going to have to forgive the guy that had killed my brother. Now, and, and this, is, this is just my story. But man... When God got a hold of me about that, because I had always said, hey, I, as a Christian, I've got to forgive him. As a Christian, I had got, I, I've got to forgive him. That, that's what I'm supposed to do. And I had said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had never done it, y'all. I had never done it. I had always been that thing I talked about last week. I, I would put it back in my pocket and, and just keep it with me. I'd say, yeah, I, I forgive him. I had never done it. And at the, at the parole hearing, we didn't get to be face-to-face -face with him uh, uh, due, to, due to COVID at the time. But at the parole hearing, I, I, did, I was able to send word through that, that, hey, I forgive him. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not consequences for your actions. We've, we've seen that. But as for me, and I actually started praying for his salvation. You see, that's forgiveness is an action. 
forgiveness is an action. We can say I forgive, but when, when it comes with a change of attitude and a change of action, then we know where forgiveness is really starting to roll in. And so it says you stop trying to give your offering at that moment you go get reconciled. In other words, there's some forgiveness that needs to happen. There's some I'm sorry's that need to happen. You go get reconciled, and then we can get right. I think too many times that's what's really hurting our individual growth and our individual relationships with Jesus. Is we're holding on to too much stuff. When you deal with teens, love you guys, you see this a lot. You see this a lot. This, this week, this one's mad at that one. That week, you know, we're mad at this one. This week, this group's mad at this one person. This one person's mad at three others. And, I mean, it's really hard to keep up with sometimes. But <laughs> hazards of the job, I guess. <laughs> but I love every single one of them. But the, but the cool thing is, is like literally, it can be it could be literally a week in between it, and they're and they're just right. I mean, they're sitting back, arm arm forgiveness is there. They they're they're buddies again. As adults, I think we could learn a little something from that and be a little more forgiving a lot quicker in our lives, and just quit holding on to stuff. Just quit holding on to stuff. So we have to beware of the dangers and the biggest danger in every single one of these is harming our relationship with Jesus. When you start harming that relationship with Jesus, when, it's, when you start getting away from the will of God, it's easier to stay out of the will of God. It's harder, the, the more you push the Holy Spirit back, the easier it is to ignore it. And that's dangerous because there's other lives at stake in our testimony. Then, because of the dangers, we've got to understand where those are coming from. So we have to be aware of exactly who our enemy is. First Peter 5, 8, very familiar. Be sober be and watchful because your adversary, the devil, walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. First, uh, and John 8, 44 tells us that Satan is a murderer and there's no truth in him. And he's actually the father of lies. Guys, understand who your enemy is. When it talks about a, a roaring lion, it's not like Satan's jumping up. Oh, here I am. I'm coming to get you. Nah. Lion's a lot more subtle than that. He hides. He blends in until he gets the right opportunity to pounce. He doesn't come charging at you from the front. He doesn't go after the strong. He goes after the weak. He wants to chip away at your relationship with Jesus, I don't know, maybe through some things like bad attitudes, bad choices, convincing you that it's a good one, unforgiveness, you know, start chipping away at that relationship. To the weaker a Christian that he makes you, the easier it is to attack you, to tear up your testimony. And his goal is to send as many people to hell as possible. And he wants to use good people to do it. He's a lot less worried about the lost of the world. He's a lot more worried about those strong Christians in this world that are going to be leading them others to the Lord. 
that are going to be sharing their testimony, that are going to be sharing the gospel, that are going to live out their testimony in front of the other people. And his goal is to absolutely tear that down. And the longer we go in, go in this fallen world, it's getting a lot easier to fall into that trap. Pastors walking away from ministry. Churches closing doors. Man, that bothers me. That bothers me. I, I would rather see more churches going up. More doors opening. More, peop- more young men surrendering to the ministry. More young ladies getting involved in the ministry and doing what God is calling each and every one of us to do and, and strengthening our relationship with Jesus Christ as opposed to seeing doors shut. That should be our goal. Is that every single person in the world hears the gospel message. But more often than not, the statistics say there's actually less than 20% of the church doing the evangelizing. That's scary to me. That's scary to me. I think we can take it one further one step further when we talk about how bad our enemy is because he is the reason we're in this fallen this fallen sinful state in this world because in the garden of Eden he's the one that went to Eve and, and He's like, hey, you're not going to die. Again, he's a liar. He's subtle. He makes it look good. He talks about how pretty sin is. He talks about how shiny it is. How good it is for you. It's going to make you feel good. It's going to make you wiser. He gives you all the great excuses as to why you should do it. He just paints a pretty picture. And we forget about being aware of the dangers. So I think to be absolutely confident enough in our situation, in our relationship with Jesus Christ, we need to be self-aware We need to be self-aware. Look at 1 Timothy 4.16. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this will you save both yourself and those that hear you. I believe that we have to be more aware of who we are in Jesus Christ. We need to be more aware of who we are and where our relationship stands. I think our identity gets caught up in a whole lot of other stuff now. I think sometimes our identity, in my case, we had a discussion on Wednesday night. What are your priorities in life? And I'll just be honest with you. Like, the church had been my highest priority for a bit. Now, you guys might be looking at me kind of funny. Well, why is that bad? Well, because it was the, the work that I was doing at the church had actually taken a step above my relationship with Jesus. It was more about, for me, I was doing the work, but where was the relationship? My priorities should be my relationship with God, my relationship with my family, and then the church. Guys, that's the priority line. That's where it should be. I shouldn't be neglecting my family. I shouldn't be neglecting uh, my relationship with Jesus Christ just to serve. Because when I get my priorities in line, man, God can do a lot of stuff through that. Just getting your priorities in line. But if you're sitting in here this morning and your priorities and your, and your identity in life is wrapped up in anything other than Jesus Christ, then, then what, there's an issue there because that's where it needs to start. 
I'm a Christ follower first. I, I'm a ch- saved child of God first. I think we get our, our, our identity wrapped up in, in, the, in good things, but they just take the place of Jesus. We can get our identities wrapped up in our kids, in our spouse, in things in the community. Our, our identity gets wrapped up in that, and we become more about that than we are our relationship with Jesus Christ. So, I mean, we, we can run a, a complete list of these, that, of what can, you can fill in the blank there for yourself. What is your identity wrapped up in? What is your priorities? But this is the important part, Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are encompassed um, with such great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily entangle us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We got people watching us, guys. There's people constantly watching us. What are you doing? Where's your relationship? Is it, are you actually living what you're saying? Are you living what you're preaching and teaching? And if you're not, they're going to see it. So you have to be self-aware. You got to be, you have to be checking yourself. It says take heed to yourself. Check yourself every chance that you get to make sure that your priority in life is Jesus Christ first and let everything else, let Him put it in order. Let Him let it fall into place. People are watching. They're going to see how you handle your wins. They're going to see how you handle your losses. They're going to see when, when do you turn to God and when do you rely on self more. They're going to see that. It's going to be something that they are looking at to scrutinize to see, is this something that I really need? If they, if they act like this, then... What do I really need Jesus for? If they act like this, what, is there it really anything in my life that I can turn over to God? My question to you this morning is simply that. Are you aware of your, the dangers? Are you going to beware of those things in your life? And are you going to be aware, self-aware enough to understand where your relationship is with Jesus. Because if there's a question on any of that stuff, then now's the time to get it right. Now's the time to check your relationship with Jesus and see where you stand. Most importantly, do you have a relationship with Jesus? That's the most important part. It starts with salvation. It starts with Do I know Christ as my Savior? If you're here this morning and you do not know Jesus as your Savior, guys, it has to start there. Because the destination that you have is hell. And if I'm sitting, and everybody that's sitting in here today that has Christ in their heart, well, they have eternal life with Jesus. Don't leave here today lost. And don't leave here today not knowing where you stand with Jesus. In your relationship, in your salvation, there's no sense in leaving here that way this morning when when the Holy Spirit's here, when He's talking to you right now. Don't leave that way. Let's pray. Father God, we love You. We praise You. We thank You for all that You've done once again, Lord. And man, my prayer prayer this morning is is that uh, this th- this was for me as much as anything to be to be watchful of myself making sure my relationship is where it needs to be with you because I fell there so many times Lord and I want it to be cautionary because I want my relationship to be you first in all things keep me mindful of that but Lord, for the, the one that's in here tonight, tonight or this morning, Lord, that's, that's lost, I just pray that you'll just convict their heart that they will not leave that way. We love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Thank you, church, for being here today. If you're a visitor, I didn't mention this when we started, but thank you for being here. Thanks for checking us out. Uh, I'll be back at the live table um, if y'all need to speak to me. Uh, Matt will be up here at the stage. So uh, don't don't leave here lost. If you don't know Jesus, don't leave here that way this morning. Uh, but if you got any other needs that you know, uh, want to talk to me or Matt about, we'll be, we'll be available to you. And... Uh, Remember to continue lift Abel up in your prayers as he's uh, still regaining strength. Uh, but don't forget to praise God for what he's done already. 
and then uh, continue to remember Angela's family as well. Um, and little John, is he's still dealing with COVID. So um, y'all, y'all remember him as well. So let's pray it out. Father God, we love you. Again, we praise you, Lord, for what you've already done in this place. Um, Lord, we just, uh, again, praise you for what you've done. And with Abel, we continue to lift up John and, and uh, Lord, for his healing. Uh, we want to lift up Angela's family and their comfort and peace in this time of loss. Lord, we just pray that you'll be with us the rest of this week. And, uh, Lord, bring us back next week to safely to hear your word preached again. Um, we just thank you for uh, Isaiah being able to be back next week, Lord, and uh, we're looking forward to what you're, what you're going to do with him uh, on his return. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you, Lord. I've been held in your hand And from the moment